Um, this is the Brazil Canada Knowledge Exchange, um, funded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, a partnership development project. This is now in its, um, this is our fourth team workshop, although we've met in other um, venues from time to time in the last three years. And some of you have been with us since the beginning. Others are meeting here for the first time. This is part of the sort of rolling structure that a partnership development project can take advantage of. So for some of you, this introduction will function as a reminder. For others, it will be new. But I hope you'll all find it helpful as we move forward into new territory. This evolving structure of expanding our partnerships is part of our mandate. Ours is an international, interdisciplinary, and intergenerational team project. So we're particularly pleased to be welcoming uh, so many graduate students to uh, the meetings this year. And of course, some of you began the project as students and have now moved on to become professors with your own students. So the meetings are about information sharing as we strengthen our capacity to co-produce research. And we're experimenting with a new, more open structure this year. Um, in past sessions, we felt our program was too packed uh, with formal panels and presentations so that we had insufficient time to dig deeply, to explore our uncertainties, to develop our questions, and to push ourselves forward into experimentation and more difficult analytical territory. So after this morning's few formal presentations, we will move into discussion mode. Here we hope that everyone here will share questions, insights, your difficulties with the material, where you find it helpful and where you do not. Your uncertainties will be especially welcome as they often open the places when we realize that we may be speaking at cross purposes without even realizing it. I think most of you have heard me talk about Anne Singh's book, Friction, when she talks about what she calls those zones of awkward engagement when words mean something different across a divide even as people agree to speak. So these zones can open up anywhere between any two people, but they can become more awkward when people are speaking across borders set up by disciplines, nations, regions, and languages. With imperialism and globalization, more and more people are crossing these borders and exploring the richness of engagement. Martin Dvorak and I began our book, Crosstalk, with the question, how do readers negotiate meaning in contexts where norms of understanding diverge? For me, this is one of the questions that transnational literacy raises for teachers of English language and literature in our times. The book, Crosstalk, focuses on Canada and its global engagements. Our team here is expanding its scope to think about Brazil and Canada, our evolving relations to each other, and to the fields of critical, transnational, and multimodal literacies. So you'll see we have the room set up, so it'll be easy for us to break into small discussion groups and then quickly reconvene in full group discussions. We've tried to make sure every table is mixed uh, across regions, nations, disciplines, whatever is possible, and we hope that you won't sit in the same place each time, but you'll feel free to move around uh, and engage with everyone by the end of the, uh, the sessions. So you'll notice we don't have people lined up as formal presenters of the program. The idea is that each of us, after the opening session, will act as discussion facilitators. So I'm going to start now with some quick 
history before turning the floor over to my co-director, Professor Valkyria Monte Moore of the University of Sao Paulo. She'll be introducing our major partner, the Brazilian National Project on Teacher Education. So I'm going to talk a little bit more now about the Brazil-Canada Knowledge Exchange, funded through the Shared Partnership Development Program to develop transnational literacies in context of English language and literature teaching in selected areas within our countries. Further partnership support has come from the Canada Research Chairs Program, from our various university partners, uh, including Glendon and the University of Winnipeg, and the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs and Trade, and we thank them all. So a quick reminder, the goals of the project were one, to strengthen transnational literacy and cross-cultural understanding within and between Brazil and Canada. Two, to work with English teachers and teachers in training to integrate theory and practice, developing site-specific pedagogies appropriate to global challenges. Three, to advance understanding of how globalization is impacting education at all levels in Canada and Brazil. Four, to advance the Brazil-Canada relationship more generally. And five, to contribute to understanding how to make transnational, interdisciplinary research partnerships work. So hugely ambitious. We're obviously still at the beginning, uh, but an exciting project. So the partnership builds upon long-standing collaboration between the Center for Globalization and Cultural Studies at the University of Manitoba, which I direct, and two units at the University of Sao Paulo, uh, the, national, uh, the Brazilian National Project on Teacher Education, headed by Valkyria Montemor and Professor Limeria uh, Menezes Trinidad de Souza, uh, which you'll hear about in a minute and the Canadian Studies Nucleus, uh, also headed by Valkyria. So in addition, we partner with Glendon College at York University, um, and you've all received, I think, uh, an exciting report about the work they've been doing uh, in connection with the project and extending beyond the project over the last few years. The University of Winnipeg, and colleagues at the state and federal universities of Mato Grosso do Sul, the Federal Universities of Alagoas, Xergipe, and Minas Gerais, and APLIAMS, the Association of English Teachers of Mato Grosso do Sul. Hope I haven't left anybody out. So a few brief words about transnational literacy. Our first understanding of transnational literacy came from bringing post-colonial theorist Gayatri Spivak's theories together with critical literacy approaches derived from dialogues with the New London School. More recently, we've begun to engage more seriously with decolonial theory, engaged with rethinking the modernity, coloniality, nexus. And that's what a lot of our readings uh, for the rest of these meetings uh, will dwell on. So I come at these questions from a background in literary studies, working out of literature into dialogues with post-colonial cultural studies. Each of us here speaks from different disciplinary and interdisciplinary locations. But we share a commitment to working across differences with the goal of advancing decolonizing agendas in education, which can potentially shift the balance between the regulatory and the emancipatory functions of education moving it out of its current servitude to the hegemony of Western knowledge and the dominance of the Anglosphere within the current global higher education regime. So our projects built around reciprocal knowledge exchange, balancing Brazilian and Canadian perspectives, and setting up horizontal and rhizomic dialogues across regions within our countries and between and across our national context. Our premise, I think, is that current frameworks through which internationalization is understood need to be revised 
in the light of the diversity of global knowledge systems and the interlocking global trade relations, which have linked and continue to link more closely Brazil and Canada. We're working to set Boaventura the Sousa Santos's model of an ecology of knowledges in dialogue with Gayatri Spivak's theorization of transnational literacy to rethink our classroom and research projects. For Spivak, transnational literacy requires deep language learning and a special attentiveness to what she terms the pre-capitalist cultures of the world. And she thinks this is best addressed through a process of mutual interruption between the multidisciplines of comparative literature on the one hand and area studies on the other. So to speak of transnational literacies is to recognize that our lives are becoming global in ways that are changing our experience of what it means to be a national subject and to live in a particular locality. Brazilians and Canadians experience and express our national and our regional identities differently. Without acting as native informants within an imperial power structure in which the agency is skewed to privilege a dominant partner, we interrogate these structures and advocate different ways of learning to work together. And together, learning is Bivac's terms to unlearn our privilege as our loss and learning to learn from below. Spivak describes the task of transnational literacy to keep responsibility alive in the reading and teaching of the textual. So that's a mandate we hope to advance through taking reading beyond the textual into new forms of media and mediation. Alan Liu poses a question that I think is relevant to our work and I hope we can think about over the rest of our meetings over the next few days. He asks, how shall we live knowledge in common? So in its broadest terms, exploring that question will be our task over the next few days. So I'd now like to turn the floor over uh, to Valkyria Monte Moore, who will talk uh, specifically about um, the Brazilian National Project and the way it interacts with some of those mandates. <laughs> 